Hi, everyone. Okay, so it's February 11. It's the end of the week, and it's been quite a volatile week. Volatile because um, on Red Futures, title says you, got, you go buy good earnings reports. On Green Futures, we actually sell and take profits. We are in a mindset where the market is very volatile. And when it's volatile, sometimes a good earnings is going to be sold down, like what happened with Google and Face. But obviously, on a Red Futures, what do you do? If you actually have cash, you're going to end up buying Google and Enphase on dips. And we think that this is the strategy that everyone else is also trying to do and doing as well. When the markets are red, and typically for the last three weeks already, I've been sharing that we've already seen the market always fall on a Thursday night. I'm not sure if you've noticed it. Jan 27, February 4, February 10. It's always been happening. Almost like clockwork. Wednesday and Thursday, there are people who take profit and punish the market down. By Friday morning, 10.30 p.m. in the U.S., 10.30 uh, uh, p.m. in the Philippine time, which is roughly about um, 9.30, I think, in the U.S., when they, when they open. Roughly in the first one and a half hour, a lot of people will still panic and sell and, cov and, and short. But the truth of the matter, because Friday is an options expiry date, uh, after 12 midnight, just like clockwork, after those options expire, the market just suddenly buys things up. So people who are short is probably going to cover by Friday. If I'm going to give you an exact time, it usually happens 12 midnight to 1 a.m. in the Philippine time. So uh, it's been happening all throughout. It's almost as if I'm seeing that the market or the hedge funds or the institutional funds would often cover on a Friday just to eliminate the risk of, uh, of anything that could happen on the weekend. And then they'll start buying things again by Monday. And then they'll sell things on Wednesday and Thursday in anticipation of earnings results coming out next week. So let's take a look what happened. Okay, so let's just give you a rundown of the earnings, like the big ones. We've seen Microsoft, Apple, Tesla, ServiceNow, Atlassian, Visa. These have exhibited strong earnings. And you'll notice if they gapped up, Yes, their stock went up further, but they also got sold down. However, even if they got sold down, they're all actually exhibiting higher lows. If you consider week by week by week, not by day, all of them are actually higher lows. Visa is what? Trading at 235. To prove to you the point, let me show you what exactly uh, has happened to most of the good earnings that we've already seen in the market. So... The market actually find the footing when the following companies reported good numbers. We've seen Apple save the market, right? And that has been still higher lows for Apple. And it's just been consolidating ever since. Let's take a look at um, Microsoft here. Microsoft also beat numbers and it's still on the uptrend. Managed to also recover from those lows. Take note that the most pessimistic time of the market was January 24 until 28. That was the week where Jan 24, I remember making a killing on my shorts because I had to cover on Monday. January 24 was um, the first news that Russia and Ukraine were actually fighting. So even the war, even the war as noise and volatility in uh, the market exaggerating on the bearish move. I'm oh, sorry. The capitulation happened, guys, January 24. 25, 26, 27, 28, that week. That was the heightened maximum fear week. And we actually bottomed out despite all those negativity on Jan 28. Similarly, on Jan 28, we actually saw the entire hedge funds close their books end of the month. Essentially, everyone who shorted covered Jan 28. And in a way, in the Philippines, it was Jan 29 because that was Saturday 12 midnight to about 1 to 2 a.m. That was the time I bought C-Limited at $120. That was the time that Tesla was trading at $800, $770. That was that day, Jan 28. And look at that. Apple, Tesla, Microsoft, higher lows. So consider anything that you hear about the Fed rate hikes and inflation. Yes, it fell, but it is still a higher low. Because we're talking about just simply profit taking here. Let's talk about the earnings beats. We've seen service now. Service now beat earnings. What's happened to it? 
you'd think that there will be people taking profits. Apparently, no. People have been actually still buying it up. From $500 to $620. Take a look, take a look at Atlassian. Did Atlassian fall? No. It even broke above. Atlassian went from 280 to 346. Now, if you're going to assume and tell me, but Nikki, Facebook and Netflix and PayPal and Spotify, those four were the lone losers. Everyone else were actually very bullish in their earnings. Take a look at what's happened with Visa. Visa did very well on earnings, gap up, and what's happening? Still above that 215 mark. Everybody who bought the fear, Jan 28, is up. I've been saying this to the class because in January, all of my wins were shorts. In February, almost all of my gains come from the long side. I'm not shorting on Feb. I'm actually buying all that fear. Everyone who's fearful. And the one time that I was fearful, Thursday last week, I actually closed some of my longs, took a loss on my coin days. Lo and behold, I was wrong on closing my longs. Because after that day, the market picked every stock up. And as you can see, Coinbase went up. When Robinhood had a bad earnings, did the market sell it off? No. That was the worst earnings report of Robinhood, and the market bought it up from 10 to 15 and consolidating right now at 1350. And when Peloton had bad earnings, what did the market do? Potential suitors, uptick. Guys, what are you seeing in the market? I am seeing the same charts as you, and the charts are telling me that the market is not as bearish as everyone wants to paint it to be. In fact, red futures market quickly buys it up. I'm not saying this out of what happened just last week or last last week. Let's go through the charts. So we already know that the companies that had strong earnings followed through and got bought on dips. That's why there is still a higher low, right? That's why you see higher lows on all of them. Now, what about AMD, Silinx, all of the semiconductors on? And next week, it's going to be NVIDIA. Google, Enphase, Amazon, Disney, Twilio, Uber, Datadog. What happened to all of these companies? Great earnings, guys. Great earnings. Anyone who made a bet on the long side, whether it be through the stock or the options, made money. Let me show to you that so that you don't just read through the charts. You actually, I mean, you don't just glance what I said. You see the charts for yourself. AMD went up. Good earnings. Silinx went up, good earnings. On, aka semiconductors, good earnings. Boom. That's why stock sell tonight. Semiconductor longs, any dips are what? Buying opportunities. Guys, if semiconductor, aka SOX L, fell tonight to about 43, should you panic? No. You should buy that dip. I talked about selling rips, yes, because that was January. There was no rip to speak of. You just sell it all the way at market. But nowadays, you might say, oh, Nikki, but this is just a bear market relief bounce. True. Granted, it's just a relief bounce. But who's to say if this relief bounce can go as high as $65 and $70? As long as we are still considering higher lows and the earnings are all positive, the bulls actually have more leeway to, uh, to unwind this oversold condition, either to mean revert to as high as $60 for stock sell. This is the reason why NVIDIA, when I bought here at about the first drop here at 207 to 220, ever since then, any pullbacks of NVIDIA, I've been buying. 226, 243, even if I sell some at 265, and I did 250, 265, I sold some. To be honest, if NVIDIA fell below 248, I'm a buyer. Because NVIDIA next week on February 17, in my view, is going to do the same thing that all of the semiconductors have been reporting, which is despite supply chain problems, they're able to beat and raise guidance, and demand has never been better. Look at what's happening with Qualcomm. Qualcomm might have fallen here because there is that resistance at 188, but note this, it's just actually a trading range. Qualcomm is just in a trading range. You've got 192 as a high, but any dips at about 157 has always been bought. Good earnings as well. So we're seeing actually a trading range on the fangs. The fangs and the semiconductors are not in a bear market. 
they're actually in a buy on dips market, except for Facebook. The only fang that is not in a good terms is Facebook. But even Facebook, I've noticed 216 got bought. Sure, maybe we can talk about the fact that Facebook should drop 180 or 140 for a better bargain. But for now, there is a temporary support here about 216. And until that breaks, what could happen with Facebook is what's happened with Netflix. Bad earnings, but what are we seeing on Netflix nowadays? Higher lows. From 360 to 406, people are actually buying that crash. And we've seen that happen. Are people actually buying crashes on fintech for next week's earnings? Take a look at this. So initially, when PayPal had a dismal quarter, Square got sold down massively from $130 all the way to $100 for 30% drop. Now the market is actually buying things up on Square wherein $100 or even this $108 in my view is actually getting bought by the market. You are seeing actually some bargain hunters on Square. And for all the things being said and done about Kathy Wood's arc, that's actually hitting lower, uh, higher lows. That's not lower highs. From 65 to 70 to 73, what's going to happen with ARC when it falls $70? Gets bought. Take note what's happening in TDOC. It's actually exhibiting some retests. And that retest is still also higher lows or just the same low. We're not seeing new lows here. How about Zillow? After reports actually gapped up from 48 to 57. And to be honest, Zillow is one of the companies that everybody shorted. So after a big short, 200 all the way to $50, people are starting to buy things back and the earnings are actually able to help the move upward. What happened with Snapchat and Pinterest? Good earnings. That's why it's in a trading range nowadays. And Snapchat manages to trade at 40 bucks. What can you see here? People have been buying all the dips of Snapchat after earnings. From 24, it rallied to 36. And every time it dropped near 35 or 36, what did the market do? They kept buying. I'll tell you what, if Snapchat fell tonight at 35, 36, I'm also going to be one of the few, num few people who also buy Snapchat. How about Pinterest, guys? What are we seeing? Okay, retest. But we are assuming this $24 area is actually a support for Pinterest. And in fairness for PayPal, despite the fact that it was a very bad quarter, here at about 119, 116, it quite is a cheap cut simply because we've seen what happened to Netflix and PayPal and uh, Netflix and Facebook. We've been seeing people actually bargain hunting the dips and not wasting their money and cash. They're actually trying to deploy it after these big drops. Okay, so PayPal fell from 300 to 120, 119. Some people are actually seeing that this drop at 120 is likely willingness to buy at that pandemic highs. You can see that May 2020 was $120. And the low of pandemic was $80. People are actually buying back $120 to $80 for PayPal. There are some buyers already. We're also seeing the same thing happen for ArcG. ArcG, which is Arc Genomic is one of the most um, risky stocks, if you ask me, because what type of earnings were we talking about genomics? None. Biotech and genomics have zero earnings and perhaps even zero revenues, but they've got the technology. What are you seeing with that? Higher lows. Even if you're seeing short covering and you can tell me all the negative things that you can, the charts are not lying. It's giving you higher lows. And LabU, which is a triple levered bull, is also at higher lows from 14 to 19. You want more evidence why you have to be more of a bull and buy dips rather than, you know, get scared and panic sell everything to cash? Let me explain to you more. Who failed? Netflix, Facebook, PayPal, Spotify. And yet, despite the failures, what's happening to the charts? People are actually trying to buy things up. They're trying to bargain hunt. That does not speak to me of a very bearish condition. Guys, if you are a manager, if you're a fund manager who owns all of these names and you've got the evidence that the world is not going to hell. Yes, inflationary prints are high, but these companies are managing and raising prices, by the way. Chipotle is raising prices. Datadog, Twilio, Disney, they're showing resilient earnings and face raised prices, and that didn't deter demand. 
That means that your allocation shouldn't look like an Armageddon portfolio. In fact, you should own the great companies at great discounts because they're not going to go to zeros or zilches. What company raised prices? Chipotle raising prices. Starbucks raising prices. Tyson raising prices. Your chocolates, your ice cream, all of your consumer-related companies are raising prices, even your household entities like P&G and Kimberly Clark. I wouldn't be surprised that Coca-Cola and Pepsi will raise prices. The point of the matter is, yes, inflation is high, but the companies are actually passing it on. The consumers are revolting, inflation nation. But despite all the revolt, I guess as a consumer, you have no choice. You end up paying higher. And what's happened with Walt Disney? Walt Disney had a glowing quarter. This quarter, Walt Disney added 11.8 million subscribers in Disney+. Plus. They're still on track to hit 240 to 260 million global subscribers. And quarter one revenues showed mobility and recovery, showing pandemic is over for face for Disney. With theme parks, increases on uh, people, mobility, Disney dropping example from 159 because of profit taking, let's say you get in at 142 to 145, we give a buy rating on Disney on drops. Take note, the worst of the worst. I talked about genomic revolution names. That is a very high risk uh, asset class. Even crypto is a high risk asset class. We've seen that bottom out, Jan 26, Jan 28, last week, February 4, more reasons for the market to buy crypto, and even the meme stocks are rising. AMC, GME, PROG, BBIG, Sense, Back, Got You, Got Lead. These are the most shorted stocks because obviously they don't have the valuation. They don't have a lot of earnings nor revenues. But what did the market do? It's not what they're saying. It's the actions that speak louder than words. What's happening to the meme stocks? GME is rising from 100 to 122. How about AMC? Rising as well, 16 to 20. How about meme stocks like Lucid? Actually started to rise, but not yet as high. What about um, Duak? 80 bucks. Duak is trading at higher lows. This is the Trump SPAC, which is a meme stock. The point of the matter is that a lot of your memes are exhibiting short covering moves. People are buying up these names for the right reasons or the wrong reasons. But the point is, people are buying meme stocks. And that tells you they're buying it because of short covering. That means the world has shorted the world to seven or eight rate hikes, and it's actually all priced in. There's nothing for you to actually go to the world and exclaim that the sky is falling like a chicken, little, when the world already knew what, what bad news you're going to talk about. Look what happened to BACT. I'm going to show to you what happened to a lot of cryptocurrencies. From what, five to seven to eight? That was a short covering move for BACT. How about crypto? MicroStrategy. Went up from 330 to 430. How about Coinbase? Would you panic sell if Coinbase fell to below 190 tonight? No, that's a buying move. It's going to go 237 further. How about Bitcoin? Ever wondered? That's a higher low. Higher low, break 38, 40K, it's 43. Sure, it has resistance at 48 and 52, but it's still higher lows, guys. There's no reason to panic. Sure, you can take profits as well. I mean, Obviously, some people will take profits. I, I, I didn't short. What I simply did was take profits. I'm of the view that crypto is going to go up. This is long side. Maybe there will be topish moves at 3 8 or 4,000, or maybe here about 3 4. But until the market breaks, there's no reason to say that the bull is over. Short term bullish should be how you are seeing the charts, because this is a short term bullish move. On an overall longer term, well, depends on your long term. Your long term could be 10 years, so that means 10 years you're bullish. But if your long term is a year, let's say the year 2022, sure, you've got a lot of resistances as well for Ethereum. But the point is, in the short term, we're talking about next week or next next week, it's still on the bull side. The bulls are still winning here. And obviously, all the earnings was great. That's why the fans were in support. And that's why NASDAQ got supported. 
So what happens to your SQQQs? SQQQ actually topped out, guys. SQQQ, or the height of fear, topped out here at 46. And there is another lower high here at 40. Assuming tonight that SQQQ rallied to 40 bucks, you should actually say that it's a sell at 40. And then, yes, obviously you can buy 35 or 32. What we are seeing here is what? A trading range. SQQQ is not in a downtrend, it's not in an uptrend, it is in an it's in a trendless wave. It's in a directionless wave, which is a buy low, sell high move. It's a trading range, just like your QQQs. Your NASDAQ is in a trading range. You've got a huge range, but nonetheless, it's a trading range. We could be trading in 330 to 400, not 300 to 400 for your QQQs or your NASDAQ. I.e., if you're looking at the index NASDAQ 100, guys, the NASDAQ may have topped here at 16.5, but there has been a lot of buyers here at 13,700 and 14,000, enough to negate bearish action because your earnings are really good. What you have to look at tonight is, will Google be bought here at about 2.7? Seems as if, in my view, Google will get bought here at 2.7 prior to that monster earnings call about their revenues on YouTube, right? So people will buy this 2.7. How about Amazon? People would buy Amazon dips tonight. If Amazon, well, this was 2.8, perhaps we can't retest 2.8. But if Amazon fell 3,000, I'd say there are buyers inching or aching to buy Amazon after that pleasant quarter. I don't know if you're going to say that. I, I think most people would buy Google though, because Google, because others were saying Amazon only beat because of Rivian. So that, that could be a pain point. Plus, Amazon hasn't been moving at all, it's just been stuck in a range. The point is, we do have some good numbers. Um, so this week, what did we learn? Tyson on great numbers. I think Has what was Hasbro's earnings? I wasn't able to read on Hasbro and Mattel. Uh, wait, but that tells you a lot about consumer discretionary. Oh, good numbers as well. So Hasbro won. Also a beat. Mattel probably also a beat. Also a beat. Guys, how could you bet? How could you be bearish on these types of earnings? We're seeing great movements on commodities. Tyson, all-time highs. That's the poultry prices. Last week, we got great numbers on Nucor. That's why Nucor or the steel makers are going up. Aluminum, Alcoa, good earnings, all-time highs. Expedia tonight, good earnings, all-time high. So if you're going to ask me if you own Airbnb, what should you do with Airbnb? Guys, any dips of Airbnb is a buy. To think of the fact that next week, a day after um, Valentine's Day is earnings of Airbnb, I'm going to be surprised if Airbnb failed because Disney, Expedia, Booking, even your airlines, guys, are giving already, the puzzle is already being completed here. The pandemic is over. The pandemic is over. Global jets are in a rampage. The market is forward-looking. Perhaps inflation or whatever can be passed upon. That's why the market is not concerned about inflation or Fed rate hikes. What the earnings are showing and the outlook and the guidance are sharing is that, hey, we got to be bullish. The companies are able to pass it on. It's not a big problem. A data dog, actually, even a firm's earnings uh, was great. I was actually surprised that a firm fell down, but I think the, the fall had to do with leakage back. That's why it's getting bought up oh, from 48. It's closing 58. I wouldn't be surprised if this goes 65 again or $70 later on. Let me show to you the numbers, okay? We've got more beats rather than, uh, than we misses were few versus the beats. Pfizer shared that uh, actually what happened was all the healthcare names have gone down after earnings simply because nobody's going to need another vaccine shot. That's why Moderna, Novavax, Pfizer are in downtrends. That one is what you should be bearish upon. Look at what happened with Novavax upon earnings. Downtrends, sell-off. If you're going to be bearish, you sell all of the Novavax. These are sells. Moderna is a sell. Right? The earnings numbers show to you that there is no need for vaccines. These are sell-offs that would continue further downwards. 
Moderna is a cell. Novavax is a cell. BioNTech is a cell. These are cells. These are bears. It's very clear. Guys, we are in a recovery. Pandemic over. Game over, pandemic. You're done. The market is already in the reopening land. Traveling. Going out and abroad. That's why Live Nation, despite those lawsuits, despite those lawsuits, people are looking forward to watching concerts. That's why it's still in an uptrend. The market is bullish. Very bullish, in fact. And the market is putting their mouth, money where their mouth is. They're not afraid to buy. Airbnb is a buy. This is a buy. Either you're blind or you don't accept what the market is saying you to you. You just don't want to listen to the market, perhaps. Airbnb is a buy. Global Jets is a buy. Disney is a buy. Even Uber beat expectations last night. So even if this dropped, people would buy this Uber tomorrow or tonight. Because the numbers show that, okay, mobility or if they find Uber expensive, they'll buy Grab. That's why Grab went up last night. And I surmise, Grab is going to get bought anytime tonight or tomorrow next week. What happened to your solars? Good numbers on Enphase. So if Enphase fell to 150, you shouldn't panic. That is an opportunity for you to buy. This is a trading range. So how about Solar Edge, which will report numbers next week? Earnings on Feb 15. Most likely, if you'll ask me, well, if, if Enphase did well, I'd assume Solar Edge will also do well. I mean, they're practically in the same industry. They're practically in the same industry. Now, let's talk about the fact um, Twilio, Datadog, Cloudflare, Under Armour. So Cloudflare is going to report tonight. Wait. Oh, maybe Cloudflare already finished reporting. Is it already uh, pre-market up? L let me see. Maybe Cloudflare already is up. Uh, but I would expect it will be up because Datadog and Twilio was up. Cloudflare earnings transcript two hours ago. Ah, okay. Break-even earnings for Q4. What is the reaction of the market? I, I, I would think that the market is probably going to buy it up. Uh, let me see. Uh, Investing.com portfolio. Let's take a look at... Um, at, uh, at the pre-markets of, uh, of SaaS names, software as a service names. Uh, IGV. A lot of software as a service names were actually beating expectations, guys. Twilio, Datadog, they'll be bought. Uh, Cloudflare, let's see. Oh, up 2%. People are going to buy these. And, and to think, no? Break-even earnings lang yan. It's not even a blowout quarter. Still though. So the market is actually buying things up. Growth stocks are not dead. They just got killed in January. November. It started November, December, January. Three months. The market has been pricing in all these rate hikes since November. And by January, we got the climax drop. And then February, we're just either mean reversion, bear market relief bounce. But either way, that is still the bottom. So, yeah, the numbers are positive. So th I, I, I do believe in what BlackRock is saying. Markets are expecting so many interest rate hikes. That's why they're betting on stocks. And I would assume they'll buy stocks that are raising prices or very resilient. The ones that can pass on all the costs to the consumers so that their profits will not get undeterred. Chipotle seems to be able to do that. That's why, you know, no matter if I was bearish on what happened with Starbucks, it seems as if, all right, maybe Starbucks can pass it on and they want to pass it on. But it seems as if Chipotle is highly confident they can pass on all the inflationary pressures to consumers and people will still eat that burrito even if it's 30% higher price. So CPI 7.5%, the largest jump in 40 years. UK, prices are rising too fast. Japan, prices are rising too fast. I know that people are saying that the team transitory is wrong, and that is true. But the point is, Bullard urges aggressive rate hikes. That's not new. That's not new. Since November, 
the market has been pricing that in already. So either you want to recycle that headline all throughout March, that's also fine, but you have to look at the actions that the charts are seeing in light of all that news because those noise, those news are nowadays considered noise as well. Markets already know about that. Nothing new. About the 10-year or the two-year treasury yield, sure. That is already rising. The market has priced it in as well. How about earnings? Did the market actually price it in? Well, the market, we said, I said that my top picks were Tesla, Datadog, and NVIDIA during the sell-off on January. So far, I'm happy with the earnings numbers results. Datadog, revenues up 84% for the quarter. 2,000 customers, their average revenues is now $100,000, and that's recurring. They have now passed above New Relic on enterprise accounts. Their revenue guidance is more than 50% growth year on year. Their guidance for the quarter is above 70%. They've beaten earnings. Look, a lot of people are using the first quarter to actually load up more on Datadog on dips. Another profitable SaaS company, accelerating growth and uh, net recurring revenues. And usually these great companies don't come cheap. In fact, what happened with Datadog in my view is now happening with a lot of companies that people are, are expecting to beat. They're buying it up. Look what happened here, Snowflake, no report yet. The earnings are on March. What did Snowflake do? They got bought up. The market is buying already. They don't care about price to sales of 20 to 30 times. They care about beating expectations and they care about good quality companies deserve to trade at high valuations. That's why Airbnb is trading up at high valuation. I wouldn't say Snowflake or Airbnb are cheap, but if they've got the numbers to back them up, looks like the market is going to be willing to pay. In fact, Tesla, the market is going to be willing to pay for this because the numbers were not bad. This is a consolidation. Consolidation, perhaps, that will directionally move on the upside. Uh, so dips of Tesla at 880 or 890 is a buy. It's not a sell. Tesla just is number one in almost all metrics now on electric vehicle market share, plug-in vehicles. Number two was Volkswagen, which also is good for Volkswagen, right? Volkswagen here actually should be a good opportunity. It's, it's a consolidation. 1211, okay, any dips of BYD, in my view, is going to be bought out by the market. So it could fall 180, but I do believe these are uptrends. These are uptrends. Maybe here about $200 area, people will actually start buying BYD on really alongside the same way they're buying Tesla. You can't be bearish when your numbers are not giving you recessionary free calls, okay? Um, good, good, good for Datadog. Look at the numbers of a firm. A firm which is a buy now, pay later, it tells you a lot about shopping. It gives you details about next week's Shopify earnings results because a firm is hugely a partner of Shopify merchants. Take note, the revenues was $361 million for the quarter. Revenues for third quarter is expected to grow to about, well, Revenues is still expected to be 325 to 335. So they're still affirming that. Their losses is just 57 cents. Actually, that's a beat because the market thought that they would lose 20, 90 cents. Um, they beat the revenues and uh, look at the numbers here. Affirm second quarter outlook. Their merchants went from 8,000 to 168,000. And the active consumers grew to 11 million. Acceleration. Payment network empowering consumers, helping merchants drive growth. This is, of course, a disruptor with the credit card movements. But Visa and MasterCard did well. Affirm did well. To be honest, the drop, in my view, might have been caused by supposedly an intern uh, leaked the earnings before the market closed. I was, I was sleeping, I think, that time. So I didn't know this. Um, so from $80, a firm felt about $50. And I think that, that got triggered with algorithms. But now it's trading at 58. I'm not sure if later it's trading at 65. Because these numbers don't tell me a, a, a reason to drop 20%. 
A firm is helping merchants drive growth, strong acceleration for the quarter, double GMV year over year. I'm not sure if this gross merchandise volume has to do with Shopify or was it with Amazon because both are partners of a firm. So over the last 12 months, they added 7 million consumers to their network. In fact, you know, initially, um, people were actually afraid who's going to win, a firm or square, because they're fighting, right? A firm, square, PayPal, both, the three of them. And it seems as if, if you're going to ask me, it's going to be important to read through the numbers of Square next week because there's already a lot of data showing that cash app downloads are stratospheric. Venmo is the weak link here, but Square is possibly the winner eating the market pie away from PayPal. So, and you can buy like Square tonight at 105. I'd buy it. Square and Airbnb looks to be a buyable on the earnings front next week. Whether you want to buy it for one week or one month or five months, if you want your options to be not time decay. Because the problem with options is that you could get a time decay if it's one week call option. But I think like if you're looking on a one month to two month call options, you'd be fine using this, the current strikes of $100 for Square and using, I mean, yeah, based on what we've been seeing on the reports. Levkin said, millions of people are now seeing a firm as a smart way to pay because of honest, transparent, and customizable payment terms. So basically, instead of using credit cards, people are now using a firm. Merchants recognize our ability to help them drive growth, deliver the experience that consumers demand on the checkout. And with our talented team of affirmers, we've never been more excited to see the impact and expand that impact of our mission. I don't see this as a bad quarter. Gross merchandise volume is $4.5 billion. Fundamentally, guys, if you want to go long a firm tonight because it's like down 58, maybe 58 to 48 is a bonanza buying opportunity. Perhaps the intern need a leakage, but what's wrong with the earnings? I don't see anything wrong here. So this drop of a firm, which I think was caused by an error, is perhaps an error that you should take advantage upon. Maybe the resistance is at 65 or 70, but this looks to be a trading range to me. A drop on a firm tonight is probably going to be bought out by the market. We've seen great numbers. So if there is a red futures, look to buy AMD. Lisa Su said growth was undeterred. Outlook, guidance, these are the stocks that could hit all-time highs by next quarter. Defying the gods, AMD and Google could. AMD and Google could because their numbers support it. They can trade at expensive valuations because they're resilient earnings. Twilio drop, that is a buying opportunity to me after a good quarter. I think what happened here was, well, it was up 20% and people wanted to just take profits. But somebody else who does not have Twilio, seeing the numbers, would be bullish to buy a 200 or 180. They would buy. Sample, let's say I don't have Twilio, I'll probably buy a 200 if I have cash. Sitting on the sidelines, probably a good entry. End phase, if it goes $140, if you were sitting on the sidelines and you wanted an energy exposure, clean energy, micro inverters, undeterred by inflation, your answer is end phase. If it drops, it's a buy. Walt Disney, how about that? Well, did you expect Walt Disney to add 11.8 million subscribers? I didn't. I, I, I was frankly shocked that Disney added that much. And they have leeway to increase pricing by next year because they're just charging $6.60 average revenue per user, whereas Netflix charges, what, $15 a month? So Disney could grow profitably by next year. You're buying Disney not for tomorrow, but really the market is forward-looking. They're buying Disney at 150 or 145 because they're expecting it will reach 170 to 200 within next year. And that is sustainable. So they would buy Disney calls maybe one month or two months. I'm not sure about the week. That's the only thing that I'm scared of because I don't know what's going to happen week in weeks. No? But I'm bullish on this. On dips, it's a buy. How about CCJ? Gap up. 
from $20 after great numbers on uranium stocks gap up. This just game play of all clean renewable energy. We are headed to a world of electrification and uranium is also part of the renewable energy, the decarbonization of the world. So all the uranium stocks are actually beating estimates. Positive move. Any dips of Cameco J is a buy. Now, if you're afraid of time decay in a weekly call option, how about roll it to a one-month call option? Or roll it to about two months call option? Because it looks to me that a quarter is enough for you to see that the trend is your friend. And Cameco is going to go up, just like how Albemarle of Lithium is going up. Cloudflare, which is all the cloud-based solutions, so far so good. Whether it be ServiceNow, Atlassian, and Datadog, Twilio, Cloudflare, so far so good. Any dips are buying opportunities. Grab, wow, this is a turnaround play if you ask me. That volume last night on that, guys, simple technicals. When the price goes up with high volume, is it bullish or is it bearish? That's basic technical analysis. Higher price, higher volume, that is a bottom for grab. That is a bottom. $5 is the bottom for grab. Any dips at six below is a buying area. Whether you're selling puts or buying call options, I don't know how high it goes, maybe seven or eight or nine. But what's important is that we've found the bottom for grab. I don't need to wonder if it's going to go four or three or two. The quarter of Uber, although, of course, this is also going to be a risk. If Grab doesn't show recovery by March, this could retest that five. Because so far, Grab went up simply because Uber did well. So it's true. We need to judge Grab based on its own earnings, not by the earnings of its competition. But that's a good thing to see the industry recover because everyone is showing pandemic over. So you've got to buy mobility names. And Grab is a ride-hailing taxi of Southeast Asia. Okay, not just a payment thing. Now, you know, charging stations are, of course, part and parcel of Biden's infrastructure. And for, for a while, you know, it rallied from 8 to 19. EVgo dropped at 8, market bought it up. So it shows to me that if EVgo can rise, so could ChargePoint, which fell from $38 to about $11. And we're seeing that happen. I bought at 13.3 when I saw that ChargePoint was still low, low risk, but high reward. Who's to say that ChargePoint doesn't go 16, 17, or 18 after Volkswagen, great numbers on electric sales, Tesla, great number on electric vehicles, how could all those electric vehicles be charged? They have to have solar homes. So next week is interesting for Sunrun, which will report on February 17. I'm long on Sunrun. What I'm saying, guys, is that by next week, there are companies that are going to report numbers. And my portfolio is just situated to look at these numbers. What are the companies that we are long or bullish upon? Okay, Roblox is reporting next week, February 15. Okay, that's one. We're looking at NVIDIA. That would be reporting earnings next week. That would be Feb 16. Um, I'm looking at Sunrun, as I said. The impact on Sunrun is going to have an impact on the overall sector of solars. Here at about 24, 23, I'm buying and accumulating Sunrun here. Because if I'm right on the earnings this Feb 17, it's going to go up 28 or above. We're going to see a move up. Just like what we've seen on Enphase and Solar Edge. Enphase went up. So should Solar Edge, in my view. Sedge is going up. Any dips of Solar Edge is a buy. If Solar Edge went to 250, buy, buy tonight because the earnings are coming out on Feb 15. You've got an industry correlation here. How about tonight, Under Armour? I actually am long Under Armour. I bought some call options for the earnings for tonight, Feb 11, because of what? Because I've been seeing a lot of retail do well. Good earnings for Tapestry. It reported numbers, right? So this was a number, positive surprise. I've been seeing a lot of retail go up. 
Um, Victoria's Secret was doing well last, last month. And look at that. Victoria's Secret is rising $62. What I'm seeing here is that consumer discretionary and retail numbers, which got punished, is not meant to be punished. Unwarranted punishment. And that's why we're seeing the market buy it up. The market unwarrantedly punish hotels. What, the, what happened? This was it. November. Expedia bottom December. By January 28, 24, it was already higher lows. Expedia is like, wow, superstar stock, if you tell me. Wow. The market is hiding on reopening stocks. And they're hiding in all-time high moves. These are considered growing names. Expedia, Booking, Airbnb. Oh, my God. I would buy Airbnb tonight if this drops. I bought at 166 last night when I saw amazing numbers on Disney. What is the world so fearful about? Your fears are unwarranted. The numbers don't show the recessionary figures of USA. All I'm saying, guys, is that it's great to be bearish and fearful, but when the facts don't add up, the facts don't add up. You have to change your mind. And the charts are actually changing their minds as well. That's why you're seeing that recovery move. Last but not the least, let's take a look at what's happening in Chinese shares. Recently, I bought Chinese financials, specifically Ping An. Ping An broke out. Wow. I bought last night 65 in Hong Kong. I was lit. I was late. I'd, I'd be honest. I was surprised that China Xi Jinping was buying the stock market up using state nation funds to support their economy. And they were buying loads of banks and insurance names. So they weren't buying internet companies. They were buying banks and insurance. This is higher lows. 52, 65, 69. That's a breakout if you ask me. Any dips of Ping An gets a buy. I still have Ping An on my Hong Kong account. I sold some uh, on my eToro, but I have Ping An on my uh, account, the other one. Look at what's happening with Albemarle. Commodities are rising, guys. Look at that. Any dips of Albemarle to me is a buying opportunity. Higher lows. Guys, what is their fear? Where is the fear from? The fear is coming from sentiment. But the facts don't add up. Bearish sentiment, good numbers, is an opportunity to make a long, a contrarian buy because the sellers are wrong. They're selling out of emotion, not of actual numbers. How about what happened with, so CCJ, Albemarle, yeah, that's a buy. So I've been buying even the Chinese 1772. I'm loading up on Ganfeng simply because maybe the Chinese names haven't, uh, ha you know, this is a bottom to me, 110. Yes, it's still consolidating there. But I think it's going to break out. Given the fact that most of the lithium and the nickel, copper, they're going up. Did you notice what happened with Freeport, McMurray, copper and gold? This, this is at all, almost trading at all-time highs. Copper is trading at all-time highs. Southern copper, SECO. Whoa. Well, not trading at all-time highs, but it's going up, right? $67. What am I seeing here, guys? We've got a commodity bull run. We've got commodities going up, inflation sky high. The market is trying to buy things. That's the point. The market is not selling things. You just have to choose what to buy and choose the right companies. What's going to happen in clean energy? People are asking me, clean energy. The earnings will dictate what TAN will do next week. TAN is trading here at about above 61, 59, 62, 65. I think that is a bullish move. So long as these earnings continue to show resiliency, then we should be seeing all of these stocks go back up. TAN goes up. ICLN goes up. These are higher lows. QCLN goes up. So I'm going long, the solars and the clean energy funds. I didn't go long with clean spark, but on dips, hey, this could have been an eruption based on the short covering. 
I didn't read the earnings. Maybe it was very good earnings. 80% surprise. Apparently, that's why from 6, it went to 10, 11. So on dips of Queen's Park, it's going to get bought. We are seeing good positive earnings. So with everyone so bearish, you have a chance to be a contrarian long. And you'll make money because you are the minority. Take note. When there's extreme fear in the market, what did Warren Buffett said? Buy when there is fear in the market. Red futures, go ahead. Try to make me fear. The, the numbers are with me. Right? The numbers are with me. So what am I doing? Okay. Obviously, you have to understand the market is fearful, volatile. So you cannot just be haughty and cocky with oversized positions. I'm not saying that you should be just all in longs. But the point is, you shouldn't also be all in scared. Roblox is going to report next week. It could be positive. It could be negative. I might some take profit partially on my Roblox. I, I'm long Sun Power, Neo, A shares, like Chinese shares. So I wanted to buy the mainland. Um, most of these are actually, um, the only name that I'm afraid of is perhaps PayPal. I, I might cover and close some PayPal. For Tesla, I think that um, if it drops 890 or 880, I'll, I probably will add more on this. So I, I will probably add more on Tesla. Um, yeah, so I'm long triple levered on yin. I'm, I'm long on uranium, plug power, tan, ICLN for solar. These are 5x longs. That's why you are seeing like 74 at 70, right? I'm, I'm not really down 15%. It's just a 5x long because I'm tremendously bullish on it. Either way, um, we'll see later. I might trim some, but I don't see a reason to panic and panic too much. Uh, let's take a look now. I still have five minutes to go. Let's just look at the pre-markets. The crypto movement here is validated to be a profit-taking move. That is not yet a panic-selling move. Profit-taking yan. Um, what about... After a strong run on crypto for the last three weeks, I mean, they should take some profits off. That's about it. Um, Clouds, they're doing well. So you're seeing actually a lot of a data dog still doing well. Any dips of data dog will get a higher low. And people are actually now buying even the snowflakes of the world. Um, I don't think shopping is very strong. So um, if people are really scared of a firm tonight, it will be trading range. But Gross merchandise volume of a firm doesn't, I mean, I think that there is a resistance at 65, 70, or 80. But um, in case a firm opens $50 or 55, I think there's a bull. It's going to be a trading range. Upwork, so negative earnings, that means because it's down 7%. Zscaler, just unchanged. So we're seeing actually a lot of the cybersecurity names unchanged tonight, despite red futures. E-commerce is um, not as good. So Amazon was not as good. Amazon's numbers came in fair and beat only because of Amazon Web Services, not on the e-commerce front. That's why people are already afraid of Shopify. But then Affirm did well. So maybe not, not as bad as people might be thinking of. Uh, SaaS names in general had a good beat. So you'll, you're, you're actually going to probably see Snowflake get bought at 290. Um, the trade desk is also next next week. So I would assume that people are buying the trade desk actually in droves after the Google beat. So people are still believing digital advertising. Look at this. From $55 to $80 are in the trade desk. Sure, it could get, get some profit taking at $76, but these are all higher lows for the trade desk. We're seeing growth stocks are back in the groove, guys. It's going to be a volatile trading range the way I see it. Um Volatile trading range for the MongoDBs of the world, for the Twilio's of the world. Um, Twilio will get bought at $200, I think, tonight. So these are getting bought. There is resistance here, 260 or 280. But 200 and 180, you've got to buy. Um, for gaming, um, in general, what's happening with gaming is that there's a massive consolidation. What happened with Activision, um, Electronic Arts, Take-Two. I don't think uh, you have a lot of movement, but it's uh, it's an M&A play. Um, it's just an M&A play for video games nowadays. Value names have been picked up. Yes, there's actually bullishness on the upside for Victoria's Secret, Airbnb, uh, Live Nation, Cathay Airways, uh, even your Expedias. Yeah, 
Steve Madden, yeah. So your retail, basically your retail are doing well. Shoe, retail. So getting some love. Um, retail like Ralph Lauren, get some love. See that? So retail as a segment. So that's RTL, no? Retail. I think there's a, there's a ticker symbol. Retail bull, 3x shares, red L. Okay, looks like this one is on a positive side. Try to look at this one. Maybe we'll look at, re I don't know what retail bull has, but if it owns a lot of retail names, looks like they're all in a bullish trend, earnings-wise. Could be a positive uh, stock to look at, retail. Capri did well. Yes, Capri Holdings Tapestry did well. So look at that, Capri, 70 bucks. Wow, you know? retail earnings did well, boom. So uh, I've been seeing quite good numbers. Retail numbers are doing way okay. So that means your Macy's is going to do well. Dips are going to get bought for Macy's yet again. So I hope that you learned something today. I'm not as bearish as people think. Um, to me, it's, a buy a it's, it's, it's really a buy the dips because everyone's like so afraid. And um, the grand thumbs of the world they might have to change their minds. When the facts don't add up, what do you do? You must change your mind. That's it. Bye.